So today I was doing DoorDash, and about halfway in, well, almost half, about a quarter into my DoorDash door shift, uh, the ignition started acting weird. Like the engine would just cut out, and then you know I pull over, crank crank it, and it'll start right up. So I'm like, okay, so I kept on driving, and sometime later it would randomly do it and then kick on by on its own again. I'm like, all right, that's kind of weird. I know, I know it's not running out of fuel because I would just put a full tank of gas in it. And so I'm driving, I'm driving, and on my last order, it cut out at least like three or four times. So I'm like, alright, after this order, I'm going to go straight home. Luckily, it's, it drove all the way home, no problem, about like 10 miles or so. No problem, drove home. Let's check the... Uh the diagnostics on this what you do is you take off this cap oops take off this cap right here and then you grab a spare fuse that I have over here and you stick that fuse right up in here that one fuse slot that sticks out from the rest of them. And that is your diagnostic port. So, oops. Then you go over here. Put the key in the ignition. Checking your light's gonna be on this side. So then you reach for it. All right, one, two, three. Oh, hold on, what? One. One, two, three. Hmm, that's 13. Yeah, I'm getting code 13. A while back, I got code 42. Oh, hold on. Multiple codes. Hold on, let me do this again. One, one, two, three, 13. One, Two, three, okay, 13 again. For a second, I thought it showed uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. There it is. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, thirteen again. One, one, two, three. So I think it repeats the same code three times. The one, one, two, three, and now it should say forty-two. One, two, three, four, one, two. Yep. So it has a code thirteen and a code forty-two. So let's look that up. All right, so I looked it up. Uh, code 13 is the oxygen sensor, the O2 sensor, which seems to have been replaced already. It looks like it's brand new. Let me see if I can get a better view of it right there. Yeah, it's right there. It seems like it's brand new. And it does seem to be the universal type because it does have those weird plugs on there. So I'm going to fix the camshaft position sensor or the pickup, you know, ignition pickup coil or whatever it's called. Um, I'm going to replace that first. Then I'm going to see if the code 13 uh, comes back. If it does, then that's going to be another diagnostic. Yeah. So I checked the... Uh, factory service manual over here you know camshaft position center yada 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 check the resistance between one it should be between 140 and 180 ohms so i checked the resistance and this is what i got 244.5 ohms yeah i'd say that the uh camshaft position sensor is toast the camshaft position sensor isn't like isn't what it is on newer cars, which is literally a sensor that detects the camshaft. No, this is the uh, 
pickup coil for the distributor. Right here, that part right there has a little pickup coil for the for the distributor. So I have to replace that. That is what's causing my issue of it cutting out randomly. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look it up on Rock Auto, which is where I get all my parts. So yeah, there's the uh, so I go straight from here to there, from here to right there, boom. So I checked the ohm systems right there. Just put one wire here, one wire in the other hole. And yeah, I got 244, like 244.5 ohms, which is way above the threshold of between 140 and 180. That's like literally 100 more ohms than the 140 mark. Got my eight millimeter right here. Let me see if I can get it out. This is just wore out. Engine's still hot. Doesn't seem to be really worn at all. I don't know how much you guys know about these Joe Metros, but I did have a Code 42, which is on the 94s and older, is a camshaft sensor, which is in the distributor. That is corroded or something. Got white stuff all over. It looks like a screw of some sort. Same thing down there. Well, here's a screw without all the white crap. But that one has some white crap on it. Hmm. Here we got the Geo Metro once again. Uh, so I'm going to be doing here is fixing that issue with the uh, with the engine cut out. Hopefully that'll fix the issue, which is this part right here, which is the uh, coil pickup on the. Uh, things which is the coil pickup on the uh, distributor and you got the uh, distributor rotor cap and this is the um, camshaft seal which is leaking like a pig you can all that oil everywhere <laughs> Okay, so I kind of forgot to hit record on part of the video. So I took the valve cover off, I took the timing timing gear off, and I took the backing plate that was behind the timing gear off. That is not looking too bad. No, this is an action camera. It doesn't really have a fixed focus, so I don't know how well you guys can see this, but. There is a score line right there in the middle. My nail does catch it. It's a little bit of wear right here. But over here on this other side it looks perfectly fine. And that right there is just where the seal sits. Yeah, this thing is totally this thing is hard as a plastic. This thing is literally hard as a chunk of plastic. Put in the noose. Seal. There it is. Got some nice flux to it. Spring side in. Got a little camshaft seal in and no more leaks. But that leak was pretty bad. Remember, these go for about 90 kiss inch pounds which is about eight foot pounds give or take so I don't want to overdo these or else you end up snapping them off inside the uh, cylinder head which is bad news So for what I 
I've done. I put the uh, camshaft sprocket back on. I torqued it down to 44 foot pounds. Now I gotta put the uh, valve cover back on. <laughs> the replacement timing gear cover I lopped off this part right here so I can take it in and out without having to take the crankshaft fully off cap, rotor, and the uh, pickup coil. There goes the old one, the faulty one. It looks to be the original OEM one. Here it is without the cover. There goes a brand new one. This thing sounds so much better now that I replaced the uh, that uh, cam sensor, the uh, pickup, the steward pickup. It runs so much better, so much smoother at idle. Then again, it is doing a cold start, so the RPM is a little bit higher. Let's see once it warms up and it goes down to 800 RPM. Let's see where that sits at. All right, so the engine is running good so far. I replaced the uh, camshaft seal and I put the uh, replacement timing cover on also I put the new position uh, camshaft position sensor slash uh, the shiver to pick up coil I put a new one on and put a new rotor and a new cap that already has new sparks in it from earlier from uh, you know, another time I already put new spark, spark plugs in it. And yeah, and I'm just waiting for it to warm up. So I can see what the timing is at with this new, um, with this new timing gun I have. Timing gun is, was uh, 30 bucks at, uh, at Amazon. So yeah, let's see how how good it is once the engine warms up. All right, so I don't know how well you can see this, but it seems that, um, it seems that the, uh, the, the previous owners, either the, the one from I bought it from or the one that he bought it from, has had this set for zero degrees uh, timing, uh, ignition timing, it's at zero degrees. That is uh, not good. That means that this whole time in driving it, running at zero degrees, wondering, wondering why this thing is lacking so much power. So now I'm gonna go ahead and advance it to see where it sits. Hello ladies and gents. This is uh, Jim Moyet here, driving in the Geo Metro. I just got done replacing the, uh, the camshaft position sensor, the Cold 42, uh, which is the uh, ignition pickup coil in the distributor, the distributor pickup coil, whatever it's called. That's what the camshaft position sensor is in the 94 and older Geo Metros when you got the Cold 42. So I went ahead and replaced that. I also set the gap, the, the air gap. Uh, Set that to what was it? 
.012 inches, I forgot what the heck the word for that is, it was like 12 thousandths or something like that, something like that, um, yeah, so I wanted to set that, and then I, you know, got the, uh, timing gun, and for some reason, it was set to zero TDC, it was set to zero, top to the center, the ignition, the shooter timing, so I went ahead and adjusted that to, you know, 10 degrees uh, before top dead center. And I'll tell you what, dude, this little engine woke up. Now it actually has power to go up the hills with AC on. It just picks up and goes now. So the whole time I'm thinking, hey, this little, chill, little, man, look, this little uh, three cylinder must be really worn now with 224,000 miles, man. This thing is like struggling up the hills with AC on. Now, it turns out, it was just the timing. The initial timing was set to zero degrees. This thing had, this thing was gutless. So, I mean, it's, it's still a three cylinder, or like 55 horsepower engine. You know, you ain't, ain't gonna be winning no drag races, that's for sure. But, yeah, this thing was like lagging, that thing was lagging as, as if I had a little, like, go-kart engine in it. Yeah, but now, picks up and goes, keeps up with traffic going up the hills, no problem. This whole time it was set to zero degrees and that almost drove for a thousand miles like that thinking it was thinking it was just a worn out engine so yeah no drill much so that could <laughs> no and also i noticed in my that before i did the repair I was noticing that my mouth for gallons were, were suffering because I was driving it around with AC and I was getting around like 24, 26 miles per gallon, you know, something all over the place. Now that I got, now that I did did the uh, adjustment to re replace whatever I had to do and whatnot, now it's getting like 33 miles per gallon with the AC on going up and down hills, just purely city driving. Stop signs, red lights, all that stuff. Got 33 miles per gallon uh, yesterday, driving 99 miles of purely city driving. So that's already a plus. I mean, granted, right now I don't have the AC on. It's actually pretty nice outside. It's like in the 70s. The other day it was like in the 80s, or reaching the 90s. Which in this little Joe Metro, you'd be cooking. I need to put I, I put my own tents on the driver and passengers windows, but I couldn't do the back windows because they're more bubbled. You know, the, the shape of the of the glass is more it's more bubbled out, and I don't know how to make the uh, tent conform to that shape without a wrinkling and crinkling and whatnot. That's something I might have to take it and get done, or I might have to wait to figure it out.